morning. And, uh, thank you to Christina for the beautiful music. And this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad of it. Much to be rejoicing about. Um, announcements. Uh, anybody want to talk about? Well, we have a council meeting this Monday. We have Juliet. Any announcements about Juliet? Oh. Council um, documents will be coming today. You're probably looking for them. The council documents will be coming today. Agenda. All right. Juliet. Juliet, uh, we're going to Ramey's in Lyle uh, Tuesday. And there's still time to sign up if you haven't already. Yeah. Talk to Sue if you're going to that. Diaper drive last week for that. Next week we have the. Blessing of the diapers, anything about that, Roberta? Not really. Um, unfortunately, I will not be here next week, so I'll just come over and load the diapers on Monday. If there's anybody who's in the area and wants to come help fill my car, that would be wonderful. But Looks like a great... Uh, it looks wonderful. Uh, yes, a great number of diapers and wipes ready. And Marilyn has something about the CPR class. Marilyn. amend the diaper thing because look, thinking about the calendar you've got two more weeks because um, our sign says it's all the way through October so I will wait until we'll, we'll have through the 3rd of October to bring diapers in if you still haven't contributed November. one November. November. I mean November the, yeah 3rd of November and then I will take them over on that Monday thank you any others otherwise please rise Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for renewal. For the right roads we avoided traveling, and the kindly words we neglected to speak, for the false gods we thoughtlessly worship, and the true selves we have starved of love. God, by your grace, forgive yes. us. For the hidden hurts we have held too tightly, and the promises we have never kept, for the careless use of time and money, and the lame excuses we have made. God, by your grace, forgive us. For all we should be and all we can amend, God, in your love, renew us. For all you have in store for us, and all you rightly demand of us, God, in your love, prepare us. For the life of the world and the love of its people, God, in your love, by the grace of God, the Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Hear and believe the promise of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. Peace be with you. 
As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Amen. Sing verses 1 and 4 of the opening hymn.
all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that was led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a provision of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was with the will of God to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out himself to death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercessions for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. We thank you, God. no mistake that the salt was not there. That was a plan. <laughs> it's, this is my first time as an assisting minister. They didn't want to have me singing up here. <laughs> so the second reading for today is from Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself, in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was hurt because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation. For all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to them, 
Do you not know? You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Be seated. So last week it was about stuff. This week it's about power. The disciples, James and John, come to Jesus and they say, we'd like you to do whatever we ask. We'd like you to have us sit flanking you on the right or the left in your glory. Today, I suppose, uh, we can think in terms of people like Elon Musk, and Taylor Swift, and maybe the President of the United States, everybody says he's the most powerful man in the whole world, or woman. But Isaiah and Jesus disagree. It's not the richest, it's not the most famous, it's not that person who has all that power, but it's the powerless servant that really has the power to change the world for the better. Our reading is part of a number of suffering servant poems in the, in the prophecy of Isaiah. If we were back up just a couple of verses, we would have read in Isaiah 52, so marred was his appearance beyond, beyond human semblance and his form beyond all that of mortals, so shall he startle many nations. Kings shall sh shut their mouths because of him. Why would they be so taken aback? It's because they, of course, thought they were the most powerful. They were the grand poobahs of the world. They were the top of the heap. But along comes this person who's ugly, who's malformed, who's inconsequential, who's even repugnant, and it's that that person who really changes the world. Ha! And that's the startling thing. Changes the world because this person takes all of the sin and the pain and the suffering of the world onto himself, or herself, or their self. If you read through those poems, these suffering servant poems, you can get a little confused sometimes because it's obvious sometimes that Isaiah is talking about a specific individual, perhaps a specific prophet like Jeremiah, who they threw down into a pit for all his efforts. And it could be somebody, a, a specific prophet like that, or it could be just sort of anybody, or it could be all of Israel itself. It could be anybody, in a sense, who takes on themselves the sin and the pain of the world. I think today we might call that empathy, to feel with, to feel with so profoundly that you draw these things to yourself. Now, we automatically today, I think, think about suffering and pain 
Uh, just like people all through history, I believe, uh, the modern atheists would say, uh, well, I can't believe in God because I can't believe that there's this all-powerful God who allows bad things to happen to good people. And we're all bothered by that, but if you were uh, someone who would take the time to read the Bible, it's all about sin and suffering and what it's all about and what it's all about in terms of the God that we worship. And various answers. Deuteronomy says, you pay the price for your ancestors. Down for several generations, you pay, you're punished for the sins of your parents and grandparents and, and their grandparents. Ezekiel says, no, that's not quite right, really. We're really punished for our own sin. But then it comes, comes Isaiah and says, there is such a thing as taking sin and punishment upon yourself voluntarily. There is such a thing in this world where you can absorb the sins of others. Isaiah is saying to us all, it could be you, actually. It could be any individual. It could be all of Israel, or it could be that part of Israel that stands against the sinfulness and the selfishness and the pain around the world. But that's, that's a very radical idea, but it's not all of the radicality of Isaiah or our gospel lesson for today. In our gospel for today, Jesus speaks with the disciples, James and John, and then with all the disciples. And he <coughs> takes us to the heart of the radical logic of this powerful, powerless servant who becomes so powerful. And it's this all-important logic. It's you, but it's not about you. It's about God. What's impossible for you is possible with God. In our lesson, Old Testament lesson from Isaiah, there was that one passage that to me is uh, the most enigmatic. And that is, it says, it was the will of the Lord to crush the servant with pain. Well, that makes it sound like God just really delights in pain. God likes to dish it out. It was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. But what that's really saying is that ultimately, ultimately, that thing that can make the world a better place, that can change the world, is not kings or powerful nations, but only God. God working through instruments. God working through people who have empathy, people who feel pain, who feel the sins of others and take them on themselves. But it's not ultimately martyrs, but it's God teaching us an impossible lesson. Then they read about James and John, and they come to Jesus thinking kind of in that dominant logic of this world, power over people is everything we want to be. We want to sit on your right and your left hand in glory. We want our president to be strong, a strong fellow. We want our nation to have the dominant army with the most lethal rockets and bombs. The dominant logic is all about dominating others. So James and John want to sit on the right and left hand, but Jesus says, you really don't understand. He says, there's another enigma, he says, can you drink the cup? Can you be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? And I'm always expecting, when I hear Jesus ask those questions, he's expecting an answer, no, you, you really can't. You can't be like me. But they say, well, yes, we can. And Jesus says, yeah, you can. You can do those things. You can be a suffering servant. But, then he says, but it's not, I don't have the power. I don't have the authority to have you sit on my left and right side. And that confuses us because we think Jesus is God. But Jesus is not only the one who shows us God, but shows us what it means to be human. And Jesus has emptied himself. I don't have that power because I've emptied myself to become a servant. 
And I don't have the authority to tell you, but it's for those for whom it's been prepared. Another way of saying what Isaiah said, it's the will of God. It's all about the will of God. James and John did go on to become martyrs. All the disciples went on to give up their lives. And they ultimately changed the whole Roman Empire. They were more powerful than Caesar himself. They changed the world because they gave themselves for what they believed in. They gave themselves in servitude to Jesus Christ. But they did it in spite of themselves, not so much because of themselves. Martin Luther talks about the theology of glory and the theology of the cross. The theology of glory has a tough time with the cross itself. And it, even in a religious guise, it still holds on to glory. It says we have to do things, we have to do works in order to make God love us, in order to climb this ladder up to God. It's all our achievement. So even changing the world, you know, we'll go out. You can do anything you put your mind to doing, the world tells us. And that is kind of feeding into this theology of glory. But Jesus preaches to us and shows us a theology of the cross. Emptying himself in the Garden of Gethsemane, he says, Oh, Lord, I would really rather you not make me drink of this cup of suffering. But not my will, but not <coughs> But not in me, not because of me, not because of my achievements, but purely because of the working out of your will. That's the avenue to becoming a powerless suffering servant who is really very powerful. So James and John and the twelve disciples, except for Judas, I suppose, ultimately were those martyrs. They did it in spite of themselves. They did it because of the will of God. So let's let that be our agenda for life. And it ultimately, it's sort of a radical thing, but it also takes a lot off of our plate. It's not up to us. It's not up to us being perfect. It's not up to us being more moral or having more of the right answers than other people. It's just letting God use us to feel the pains of the world around us. And I think in this critical election cycle, uh, of course we're always in an election cycle in the United States, I guess, but in this time when we have to make decisions, I think we need to pray that God would help us believe in the theology of the cross, the power of the powerless, and ask God to help us guide us to vote not for the candidate who can accumulate power at the expense of others. Guide us to vote for candidates who can work for the sharing of power with the powerless. Guide us to do this in spite of our own appetites for power, in spite of ourselves. And guide us all to pray, not our will, but thine be done.
Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, as of the Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated in the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Prayers of Intercession Challenged by God's Word in Christ, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all of creation. <clears throat> Most High God, you alone can change the world. We thank you for sending us the ultimate powerless servant, your Son, Jesus Christ, who drank from the cup and was baptized with the baptism of suffering and death. We thank you that Christ emptied himself to fill our lives with hope and courageous love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy God, we give thanks for all those you use as servant leaders of the church and in the world. Bless bishops, pastors, and deacons with humble wisdom and ground them in your love. Bless all the leaders of society who work harder to make peace than war. Bless all those who reach down to touch the pain of those around them in any way. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of justice, guide our discernment as we vote this season and turn all candidates from a hunger to win to a hunger to serve. And give us the wisdom to make government work for all, even as we grow in our trust of government, institutions, and one another. God of grace, hear our prayer. <laughs> Lord of all healing, in your compassion, send your angels to watch over, rescue, and protect those who are injured or ill. Nurse those who suffer hardship, disease, injury, or difficulty with your comfort and peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, that St. Luke will always be a congregation where love abounds. We thank you for servants like Janine, Roberta, Aaron, and Betty, who help us reach out to our neighborhood and to our neighbor members. Make us all ministers of the gospel and the kingdom of your peace. God of grace, God of reconciliation, we grieve with you over the intractable warfare going on in Lebanon, Israel, Gaza, Sudan, and Ukraine. Quench humankind's insane thirst for revenge. Give us the courage to leave past injuries in the past and to repent that too many children are growing up knowing nothing but fear and hate. And make our nation a world leader in peacemaking. God of grace, Prayers of the congregation of hell well. I pray for my wife Linda and one of her goes uh knee replacement surgery this Wednesday and the surgery is made all the more concerning since she had open heart surgery uh, a few years ago. God of grace. God of 
grace, your Pray for Joyce. We pray for Joyce Taylor, whose uh, granddaughter Christine uh, had a child by cesarean prematurely, but that child has passed away this past week. We pray for Joyce and the whole family. God of grace, hear our prayer. Prayers of thanks for those that set up our, um, our progressive dinner last night. Um, prayers for those who opened their houses to us. Those who brought food, uh, it was a wonderful gathering. God of grace. Hear our prayer. We give thanks to God and, and the medical doctors who operated on her two weeks ago. She went in for a test on Monday, and the doctor put a, uh, um, what they, they had a fork, and what do they call it? Bypass. No, the, the, the fork that makes it tuning. easier. Oh, tuning. The tuning. tuning fork. And they tapped it next to her ear, and she felt it was so loud. And the doctor said to her, that really wasn't very loud but to her. It was. God of grace. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also with you. We share that peace with one another.
our duty and our joy, <clears throat> that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who was wounded for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. He poured out himself unto death, bore the sins of many, and he makes intercession for us sinners. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Holy God, you have welcomed us, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God Almighty. 